Hi, I'm Scott Murphy, and here I am interviewing Alyssa Vilpez, whose music I have been following for uh, about a year now. First heard you about a year ago. I've listened to a bunch of it that was um, on your site, and uh, yeah, I've really I've become a fan of your music, uh, particularly your rocky stuff, but also I know you do a lot of uh, other different ty- styles of music, some very folky stuff, some punk cabaret, some electronics music. It's, yeah, it's a, it's a varied collection and uh, one that uh, had a lot of surprises and um, I, you know, really enjoy your music. Thanks. I, first off, let's talk about your, your new album. And uh, your new album is called uh, Holding On, Letting Go. Mm-hmm. And uh, what kind of music can we expect from your latest record? Right, well, um, Holding On, Letting Go is mainly... Um, I, I don't like saying this because of the connotation of pop, because I, I don't really like pop, but it's, it's a pop rock album, album mm. meaning that the, it's mainly indie rock, but it's got... It's poppy, you know, yeah. on the poppy side of indie rock. Um, it's got some folk um, flavors as well, mm-hmm. and uh, it's part of a trilogy of uh, three albums that have been recorded in the last three years. Mm-hmm. And this one is the first one coming out in December, two thousand eighteen, and then the next two will be in two thousand nineteen. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Cool. You noted there that it was uh, a three-year project. Uh, it's quite a long time. Uh, you have produced um, a, a number of other albums. Was this uh, process difficult, more difficult than the other albums that you've, you've, you've produced so far? Well, I wouldn't say more difficult or less difficult. It's, I guess, you know, the, I started making albums uh, 20 years ago and um, every time I learned something else, something new, you know, how to make, how to do it better, what not to do, so in a way, it's been easier, if anything, uh, in the sense that I knew what to do. But then again, I can still tell you, you know, stuff that I'm going to do differently like next time. Yeah. Um, the, if any, the, the other thing is that um, the, the band that I was recording with kind of pulled out at the last minute. Mm-hmm. And so I had to uh, have a different approach. Yeah. Um, I had to decide to go at it from the angle of getting people to play... Uh, track by track um, mm-hmm. rather than doing a live album yeah and uh, even people from the other side of the world I have a violinist from New Zealand the drummer is from Spain yeah. you know uh, it's I hear it, that there was a particularly interesting story to, to do with the drummer how you got the drum parts yeah recorded. so my the, the drummer that, that originally wrote all the drum parts mm-hmm. couldn't make it to the studio Right. And we only had three weeks to spare, uh, so we needed to go to the studio or it wouldn't, wouldn't have happened. So I didn't know what to do, and I asked my guitarist, Sergio Bueno, to tell me if he knew any, any drummers at all that could learn 25 songs in two weeks. And he said... That's a lot of songs. Yeah, and uh, he said, yes, I do, but the guy's in Spain. And, uh, and basically I thought, well... How about I pay for his flight, I pay for his meals, and he can stay on my couch. I can't, you know, pay him. Yeah, but, that's Yeah, and then, but, you know, if he wants, he can stay in Edinburgh for as long as he wants, and he will be fed, and, you know, he, he will have a roof under his head. So he came, and he, he worked really hard. We, we were rehearsing six hours a day, and he also had been learning the songs via MP3, in Spain, right. Right, right, yeah. without any sheets, he did that all of, you know by ear, and he uh-huh. came here and learned them all. And then we spent two weeks in the studio, and that's how we laid down the tracks, the drum tracks. All right. It all came together in the end. That's yeah. That, that sounds pr- pretty intense. It pretty, was, pretty intense. and we we were you know in a home studio. Uh-huh. So at one point we had the neighbors like demand that we stop because imagine drumming for eight hours it's a long time like some people are going to get pissed off Mm. (laughs) and rightly so you know absolutely so 
so you wouldn't say that the recording was more difficult or less difficult. It was just different. Different, yeah. Different to yeah. your previous experience. I mean, experiences. I had more control of it in some senses because it wasn't my house and I had everything that I needed, mm -hmm. apart from you know uh, when we went to record the drums, rather than being at a studio. And so you know, I had the time. I could do it when I had time, and so in that way, it was easier. Yeah. 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 And what about the uh, the post production process? Was that did, that took quite a long time? Did it? Yeah, yeah. Well, this time I basically decided that rather than trying to do the job myself, uh -huh. I I would give it to somebody else. You know, like so I got it to a mixing engineer, yeah. and he pretty much you know I didn't see him very much because he worked on the other side of town, and I would send him files. I quite like working with like that, sending files and then having them you know, mix them and go, okay, how does mm -hmm. this sound, you know, good, bad, whatever, let's change mm -hmm. this and that, so he, that's, yeah. That, that's interesting, because you hear other musical artists talking about how they like to be, be. in be in there, talking to the mixing and the engineer, you know, at the mixing desk or, you know, whatever with, you know, and, and yeah. being really close but you you prefer that just kind of exchange of uh, well the thing is this by the time i have given the tracks to the mixing engineer yeah i am so sick of being in front of the computer right, right i am yeah. so sick of that it's like i'll oh, just let them get me out of here and you know and also i'm too close to the tracks i can't hear anymore what doesn't work i need an external ear that will say man let's change this you know yeah, or right. whatever and then i need like that week or however many days that they'll work on it and then come back to me and present the new thing for me to have a new fresh ear, you know? Yeah. So that's why I don't really like being in the studio because I just get so like confused after a while. I'm like, oh my God, I just can't hear the difference, you know? But, yeah. Just all melts. Yeah. Just all melts. My ear just gets tired and yeah. Yeah, that's, that's it. That's it. Well, we've mentioned that you have produced quite quite a few albums oh uh, sorry to interrupt i forgot another no? thing oh okay the, yeah, go the, ahead the cool <laughs> the cool part of the uh the post-production well my favorite was being able to work with emily lazar from new york she's um right. she's an award-winning a grammy award-winning and wow. the only woman in recent times to, have, to actually win that a kind grammy. of a, a grammy award for um for mastering and I was like, all right, I want the best, you know, and uh, and I got. And you aimed high and you got it. Yeah, it was. She was. She was awesome. She's done um, Martha Wainwright. Right. And I, you know, I chose her because of the similarity in some way of the sound that I wanted, you know. Yeah. And she yeah. did an excellent job. So. Yeah. So yeah. I'll definitely work with her again. If I can Ex afford it, because she's expensive. Ex but, I, you know, I can't. I mean, all if you. Yeah, I can imagine. I mean, especially if people are, you know somebody who's won a Grammy or, you know, it's got a big award like that, you know, it's, uh, that comes with a price tag. Yeah, but she wasn't the most expensive either. She, yeah. was, she was reasonable, you know? Yeah. yeah. Anyway. Yeah, anyway. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Let's, let's, get, let's continue. All right, yeah, so the question I was going to ask yeah. was you um, have made a, a bunch of albums, um, 10 or more. Mm -hmm. uh, I've it, I don't know the precise number you seem to be. I don't be. know the precise number either. Right. It's, it's just it's like it's blurring, you know. I've been writing so many songs and a lot of them have not seen the light of day because right. they just kind of didn't seem good enough even after I recorded them. You know, I've got an entire, entire, oh my God, like at least, what is it, at least three or four albums that have just never been heard by anybody. Right. Because, okay. yeah, because, you know, we did them in the studio then, you know, listening to them again, and I'm like, this is just not good enough. Like, you know, mm. it's just not what I want for these songs. These songs deserve more. And then I, you know, I just kind of leave it because I'm like, well, I just, I get so into the future and what I want to mm. do next that uh, at some point I leave it. But some of them will be re-released, -re like a project with, um, there's a project with Aaron Shippers from... Uh, I think that's is pronounced right, shippers or skippers. Anyway, from well, because it's a it's a Dan it's a Dutch name. Dutch, so I don't, right? Yeah. Okay, you're not um, you're not 100 percent sure no, on the uh, but with pronunciation. Him, no, okay. but with him, like I never met this guy. We collaborated over the internet. Oh, so it's another kind uh, of email exchange thing. Yeah, right? and he's see, amazing, and we've got an album together. Uh, we our side project is called Muke, and that's 
going to come out at some point. Right. You know. Oh, okay. But who knows when. Um, I realise now that I've been sidetracked from this question. Um, again. That, that again. Again, I've been sidetracked from this question. Um, what continues to motivate you after all these albums you, you've, you've produced so far? That, that was the question that I was originally starting to ask three questions okay, ago. Okay, okay. So the, the answer to that is multifold. Because partly it's that I just have to. I feel that if I don't write music or if I don't, you know, if I'm not creative, I just go a bit crazy, you know, like I just don't, I'm not happy. I need to, I need to be able to do that, uh, to feel sane, because I put my feelings through the music. Yeah. Uh, partly is also um, about in fan engagement, you know, like I really get a lot out of, of feedback from people that are listening to the music, because I'm not just doing this for myself, you know, I'm doing this to try and build a bridge with with people in a way that you know uh, can be done with words or any any other way i think art mm. can be really sometimes the only way to bridge that gap right and so Amazing. yeah and so when i get the feedback and i get somebody saying oh that song you know made me cry or that song made me um realize something about myself you know uh or there's somebody, you know, uh, there's a song from the album that I just uh, am releasing keep, called Keep Going, and, and it was uh, somebody said, oh, you know, that really resonated with me, made me think that I should always keep going no matter what. And, mm. and I thought, well, that's why I write the songs, you know. Yeah. It's, uh, it's kind of underpins my philosophy, uh, which is all about offering, you know, not being afraid to delve in the darkness, but also yeah. offering... A light, like a lightness. Yeah, well, a, li a light that you can follow out of the darkness. You know, accepting uh, the darkness, but also there is a, a way. Uh, a, a, a hopefulness. Uh, yeah, ho yeah, uh, yeah. It's really important to me. Not to write songs that are like ah, happy go lucky and not yeah. not deep, but at the same time, I'm not into depression. You know, and and, yeah. and writing something that wanna, wants to make you slash your wrist. You know. <laughs> <laughs> so we can't look forward to your Joy Division uh, style <laughs> album. <laughs> I used to write a lot more melancholic songs like. Yeah. The Moon Whispers is more, much, much, much more melancholic. Okay. In my twenties, you know, I was okay. a little bit more out of a goth, I suppose. I so, if you want to check out some more of those melancholic, uh, depressing tracks, they're not know, depressing, but you know, some people <laughs> said, I, I don't know. Okay. It, okay. They're just melancholic. Just, just melancholic, yeah. got more gothy. Yeah. Um, darker. Darker. Folk noir. Uh, okay. Okay. Oh, amazing! That sounds great. You've recorded. Uh, a bunch of solo albums mm. um, and um, also uh, albums with your band, you've talked about the Moon Whispers you've been in other bands um, what, what do you prefer? what do you prefer being uh, both in terms of recording and live and being a solo artist being a part of a group is okay. that yeah, well the thing is, even when I'm part of a band uh -huh. I am the, the songwriter Right. so I write all the songs and although I am open... Have you ever had a, 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 a co-collaborator or uh, have you always been the chief songwriter uh, in each band Okay, so had? the only time when I had a proper collaborator was with Arian Shippers. Because right. he writes the music and I write the lyrics and the melody of the... And, and I mix the, the vocals. Mm -hmm. So that's a really 50-50 right. project. But otherwise, I write all the songs. And then I kind of ask the, the, you know, the musicians to add their own flavor to it but not you know but while keeping the main idea of the song and at the end of the day the idea is that I've got the last word if I don't like it it's not going to go in the album right. okay. but I am open to other people's opinions you know? yeah, yeah. Um, so to answer your question um, what I prefer well when it comes down to recording obviously it's easier to do everything yourself so if you're just doing a song like an uh, you know, a, a solo song, meaning, you know, uh, maybe an acoustic version of something without drums, or even with drums now that I'm a drummer, uh, it's, it's like, it's easier if you're on your own. Yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, when you perform, I, pref I definitely prefer being with a band, uh -huh. just because of the energy, you know, and I used to like it because, you know, I was shy and I wanted to just hide behind the mm -hmm. guitar and the, uh, behind everyone else. But... It, now it's, it's not like that at all. It's more that I just I love the energy that I can get 
yeah. from the other player when we have tight and you know we really get each other, which to be honest doesn't happen very often. The the negative part of this, I mean, the difficult part of this, is when you need to organize gigs because, <laughs> oh my God, it's a nightmare. You know, I just end up feeling like I'm the mummy. You know, trying to, what what is it? You know, you're trying to organize stray cats. What's the what, how do you what is it? Herding stray cats. Her herding. Uh, I'm, I'm no, whatever. Ra wrangling. No, I don't know. I don't know. Um, you, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm not sure. Whatever, it doesn't matter. What, you know, you're trying to get everybody organized. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you're trying to get everybody. And sometimes it can be a real Like night. flocking the sheep or marshalling yeah. the troops. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Other ones of those sorts yeah, of phrases. Yeah, right, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, at this point, I want to go, I want to rewind right back to the beginning. Okay. What first drew you to music? And at what point did you think, yeah, I think I can make a career out of this. Well, I'm still asking myself what, what make me, <laughs> makes me think I can make a career out of it because, you know, in this day and age, it is actually really hard to make a career out of it. And uh, I do have another job as well, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and it fits. It fits with it. Because um, I'm a hypnotherapist, a coach. So it goes well. You know, both are about kind of healing yourself and connection with other people and transformation. You yeah, know? what you were talking about, that, 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 so, yeah. that hopefulness, that, that kind of mm. coming out of the darkness. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. So, um, so they've got that in common. Um, so I'm not sure. I would love to make a career out of it in the sense that I'd like to make more videos. I'd like to make, you yeah. know, uh, to, to write more music. Mm -hmm. Well, the way I started making music was basically when I was 16, I watched a very oh, handsome young man. Uh, play baby Was that part of the attraction? <laughs> no, no. Well, I don't know. Maybe a little bit. Anyway, uh, he, okay. he was playing <laughs> Baby, I'm Gonna Leave You by Led Zeppelin at the school concert. Yeah. And um, actually, he was so shy that he was not facing the, the audience. He was playing with his back to the audience. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, and, but he was amazing. He had a great voice. He had a, you know, he played yeah, guitar okay. perfectly. And I thought, oh my God, you know, I want to be like him. And um, bought myself an electric guitar, um, but shortly later realized that actually I needed an acoustic guitar. Mm. My thing was more acoustic guitar. And then what really um, made my sound what it is now, I suppose, is when I came to Scotland and I was 18 and I, and a fellow Italian uh, introduced me to psychedelic folk of the 70s from Scotland, like the incredible string bands and paper convention and the trees and all, you know, all that jazz. And I really loved it so much. And I started singing traditional songs first, traditional folk. Yeah. And then I thought, oh, I should write my own songs. And that's where it all started. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So those were the bands that, that were kind of your earliest influences that really made you want to make yeah. music. Yes, definitely. Those were the bands or even the traditional folk as well, like ballads, you know, from Ireland and Scotland and England. That I love that stuff so much. And yeah. I also, you know, um, I loved some uh, what we call cantautori italiani, which are like the singer songwriters from the 70s in Italy, uh -huh. like Battisti and Battiato and Francis and Guccini and De André. Uh, you might not know who they are, but in Italy no, they are very famous. No, don't and know they, who they are. They no. were like my earliest, you know, their earliest yeah. music. And it's all very storytelling based, you know, it's very much like this is a song about a story, yeah. not necessarily about the music is less important. Uh, and the same with the you know, when I came here to Scotland, it, those traditional folk songs are very much about the words and, you know, the story. Yeah, they are very much so rooted I, in storytelling. Yeah, yeah. so th As, that's uh, the same with me. My, my Scot yeah. A lot of the Scottish music is very rooted in storytelling. Yeah, and this yeah. Is, so for me, you know, also I used to write poetry and one of the reasons why I started with music as well was that silly enough, you know, I thought, ah, oh, poetry, no one cares about poetry anymore, you know. But mm. if I write a song, people will listen. <laughs> so I... Uh, it is a more yeah. popular art form than that's, poetry. Yeah. You know, it's, but now it's, it's, it's re-emerging, but thank God, you know, but uh, that's also another reason. Uh, I always started a song, and still to this day, most of the time, I will start a song from words, not yeah. the other way around. Yeah. It, has it ever been the case where you've 
like picked a tune out the guitar? Sometimes, or yes. Maybe, More recently, yeah. though. More recently, I've switched it up a bit. You know, uh -huh. decided, ah, oh, let's just just change, change and see what gears. happens. You know, just to do something different, and and it it can influence very much the outcome. And then I would write a word to go with the music. Right. Yeah. Sweet. But I, you know, for me, it's really important that the words are meaningful. They're not just like a la 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 la. You know, something <laughs> doesn't mean anything. I hate that kind of thing. You know. Is that is that. A, a kind of chief bugbear of just like meaningless lyrics or ah, like, yeah. this, this like I love you, I love you, I love you, you know, I can't live without you. Uh you know, oh god, I hate that. <laughs> uh. Oh wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Diff different strokes for different folks, eh? Yeah. Uh, uh, you uh, mentioned there when we were you were talking about career that you would love to start uh, making more videos um, I hear you're in the process of making one right now uh, for your single Frontline. Yes, so the music video, I'm quite excited. There's a single coming out in just one week. So next Friday, there will be holding on and letting go the single the coming title out. The title track, the title yeah. track comes out. Now. And then in October, we got the single Frontline, which I'm very excited about. And the, and the video for that, I'm doing with Liam Baker, who's a filmmaker. Mm -hmm. And we will, we will be shooting it here in Edinburgh, at the Edinburgh Castle. Yes. So it's really exciting. And it's going to be, you know, it, it's sort of uh, based in the 18th century times, but not really. Like, you know, a sort of... Uh, fantastic realism you know if, if maybe that's how you call it i'm not sure but magical realism. magical re yeah sorry magical realism. that's all right and yeah yeah <laughs> not good with genres but yes uh so that's i'm really excited that i get to act again i love i love being in music videos it's awesome have you done m m many a um, acting well, I would, um, I've done music some, videos well i've done some acting like straight acting and uh-huh I've done some, I did improv for three years, really love that. Um, but also, I, I, music videos, I think three so far, like proper music videos. Yeah, this is yeah, going to yeah. be probably number three. Um, I really love doing uh, the Queen Victoria music video, which um, is about, you know, is part of, it's a single from the second album that will come yeah. out next year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's really cool too, but I really enjoyed doing it, you know. I mean, it was hard work because I did everything, you know. I was like co-writing the script, doing the, you know, helping the director, doing the, doing the costumes, I did the catering, you know, I did everything. It was wow. exhausting. Wow, that sounds like a lot. <laughs> yeah. Everything bar making the tea, it sounds like. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <it's> yeah. <laughs> Probably did that too. Oh, wow. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> We've talked a little bit about your genre hopping ways. Um, you've obviously taken in um, a lot of genres. Do you have a favourite? And is there any genres you've not yet explored that you want to explore? Yeah, so I don't really have a favourite. I mean, I can say I have a favourite at any one time. Uh -huh. So, like, I started. So what would be your favourite right now? In, right now. In this moment. Well, right now, because I'm looking at the future, ah. I'm looking at, like, ne not next year, but basically, yeah, a year and a half from now, I would re I really, really want to work on my electronic music project. It's so new that I can't even tell you what the genre is. It's, it's kind of, it's got some 80s influences. It's all of it electronic except for drums. Um, I mean, there, there will be some acoustic elements, like possibly some guitars, obviously some singing. Uh, possibly some live drums. Uh, some of them won't be live. I will be making them, but <clears throat> on an Ableton Nine. So it's it's very much experiment experimenting mm -hmm. with with electronic music, which I know it's you know there's loads of different kind of electronic music. There's dance, yeah. there's techno. Well, it's not that, um, but there's an element in it which is quite new, which is the way I sing. Mm. So normally I I sing in a kind of melodic way um quite it can be quite slow at times and i do have like with milk i i can sing quite weirdly and do all sorts of strange things in my mouth but in this one is more like i wouldn't say a rap because it's not just talking but it's very fast rhythmical singing yeah 
uh, at times, mixed with really melodic lines on top. Yeah. So I don't know what that actually means, like what that's going to sound like. But it's a bit dark, a bit 80s, electronic, and upbeat, most of it. Even though it does have that, you know, like I said, the dark side. But it's more upbeat. And it's not comedy. It's uh, like, you know, because in one of my albums that's coming out next year is more, there's a lot of comedic elements. Comedian. This one is more straight, but right. it's about... I'm trying to combine the therapy side, as in a lot of the themes are not about relationships, they're more about internal states right. and yeah, personal development stuff. And, and that's um, the Where Have All The Good Guys Gone EP is the one you're talking about that's a, 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 more, comedic. a more comedic storytelling. Cabaret, storytelling, comedy. That's mm-hmm. next, probably, ne- I think it's next February that's coming out. Uh-huh. or March, I can't remember, but... And then after that, there's an indie folk album, which is a lot more, you know, the old, very similar to the old Moon Whisper stuff. It's more like folk with some European and Celtic flavors. Uh-huh. After that, um, I am thinking of re-releasing some old stuff that's been going to be re-remastered, like Moon Whisper things. Uh-huh. And then comes the electronic album. Hey. The one you were the just talking, talking about. about. The, the one you were talking yeah. about. So that's um, a burn in the future. We're yeah. talking um, into 2020 there, yeah, surely. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, right. I think so. Okay, okay. Amazing. Well, it's, I think it's been, I think it's been um, a good interview. I think okay. um, the only thing left to say is, like, you know, just to uh, clarify um, what, you know, when the, the album is coming out, we're holding on to like, uh, Holding On, Letting Go, mm-hmm. uh, that's the end of this year. Yeah, so Holding On, Letting Go, the single, is coming out next week. Next week. Um, Frontline, the single, is coming out in October. Uh-huh. And then the album will come out in December. Right. So 14th of December, uh, if I remember well, I'm pretty sure, 2018. It will come out on Spotify. You can pre-save the album. You definitely can pre-save the singles. Well, I look forward to that. And... Thanks very much for the interview. Thank you.